139 kilometers a day. Five days, 23 hours, four minutes, and I think 17 seconds. This guy is an absolute beast. I just had the great privilege of interviewing Luke Ivory, who is now the new record holder for the North Coast 500. In case you have never heard about this route, this is a very famous route circling around the north part of Scotland. The total distance is obviously 500 miles, although it seems to be more 516, which can matter at the end. And Luke just ran it in less than six days, destroying the previous record that was for more than eight days. I had the great privilege to be able to interview him for more than an hour and a half, where we talk about literally everything. His childhood with running, the race he has done, all the product that he has in the future, and also a very specific topic about the North Coast 500 record. For this very video you're seeing, I've cut the interview to only show you the bits about the North Coast 500, and also to make the video a bit shorter. But I will also be releasing the full interview next week. As you know on this channel, I always publish on Monday and Thursday, and Wednesday days are only for extraordinary videos, the special ones. So the full interview will be released next Wednesday. But right now, let's go back to the interview with Luke, talk about his extraordinary fastest known time record. Hey Luke, welcome to the channel. Uh, thank you very much for, for being on uh, on this channel. It's, you're the very first guest, the very first interview I'm ever doing. I'm uh, really happy it's you. You're on here because uh, you've just done something absolutely incredible. Uh, you run the new record for the North Coast 500. My name's Luke Ivory. I'm an ultramarathon runner from a small village called Brewer in the far north of Scotland. Uh, I've run a few ultramarathon races before. Uh, I've not actually run a great deal of races. I've been running ultramarathons for seven years, but I haven't competed that much because I've basically just been concentrating on training and I've been traveling a lot. So it's, sometimes it's difficult to get to races and because I haven't, over the last few years, I've kind of not competed as much as some other people because I was always aware that I wasn't quite at the elite level that I wanted to get to. And I knew it would take me a few years to get to the level I wanted to get to. And then I thought, I'll, well, I'll start competing more once I get to that level. Uh, so this summer, yeah, it was my first fastest known time attempt. It's something I've not done before, but I just felt that over the course of the last few years of my training, something that I seemed to excel at was recovering very quickly and being able to do hard sessions day after day. So I thought that whilst the longer ultramarathons is something I'd be better at, 100 mile races rather than 50 mile races and perhaps even further, I felt that maybe my main strength would actually be uh, running a week long fastest known time attempt. So it's something I've had in my mind for a while while that I'd like to try and then uh, I was just looking at courses that I would maybe like to go for and the record that was achievable and uh, something that would uh, have a bit of meaning for myself and then I was looking at the North Coast 500 route and that seemed perfect for me. Uh, my home village of Brora is uh, on the route that's about halfway between Inverness and John O'Groats, so it could either have been near the start or near the end, depending which route I decided to go around. So in the end, I decided to do the clockwise route, which meant I came through my hometown on the, the final day. So the, the record is held by an ultramarathon runner who uh, lives in Orkney. I think he might be from England originally, but he's lived in Orkney for many years in the far north of Scotland, uh, just off the mainland. He's actually, uh, he holds many records. I think he's currently, he's like aiming for like 750 different records. He's got lots of different distance records, age group records. Okay. I think he's in the 60s now, so he's got lots of different age group records, like for over 40, over 50, over 60. Okay. And uh, he, he ran the North Coast 500 a couple of years ago and he'd done it in like eight days, 17 hours. So that worked out at approximately uh, 94, was it 96 kilometers a day, 59 miles. Mm -hmm. So I thought in my in my training, I'd like done back to back 100 Ks and uh, well for three or four days. And so I thought, yeah, 100 K a day for uh, seven or eight days is something that is well within my capabilities. So I decided to uh, take on the North Coast 500 challenge. And yeah, so I arranged it with my crew, William, who was a, uh, he was back in the country for the European Championships. He's part of the Tartan Army, he goes to every Scotland match. So he was like 
he, he lives in Portugal, but he was coming back to the UK for the Scotland Games, the European Championship. So we decided that we would be good to go in the, the week after the European Championships finished. So we that's how the, the event was timed and how it came about. Yes, I didn't have a, a strict time scale where I would walk uh, every such and such time. I think I basically, because it was going to be running 100, I was planning on running in 120 to 160 kilometers a day. So I just thought, right, we'll walk all the uphills. Uh, there's going to be quite lengthy spells of walking and uh, yeah, maybe after a break, uh, maybe walk the last kilometre or first kilometre after you've taken a food break and just every now and again, whenever you feel a bit tired, just yeah, walk for a bit and just kind of be flexible, play it by ear and just judge how you're feeling because I think when, when you're running that distance, it's inevitable, there's always going to be periods where you feel better and stronger and you can run a bit more and there's going to be periods where you're feeling a bit kind of tired and you need to recover so you're kind of going through a recovery and re-energizing stage like two or three times a day kind of thing you're like oh I've just had a good 40k but now I'm tired and I'm kind of recovering from that and I need to walk a bit more and then you'll get your second wind and you can start running a bit more again so yeah there was no strict rules regarding how much I walked it was just depending on how I was feeling but most of the hills if it was a slight hill then I would maybe run it for a bit it depend how fresh I was feeling but anything steep had to be walked so that was a then I would just view the hills as an opportunity to rest because yeah hills can't make you more tired they can be the most difficult part if you're running but if you view them as a rest and just walk them slowly then sometimes you might feel fresh at the top of the hill and you did at the bottom you know? so I would take them as opportunities to eat and drink as well so if I knew I was at the bottom of a big hill if I was if my crew vehicle was close enough I would like try and get him to stop near the bottom of the hill and then I would like get some food and some drink to take on uh, whilst walking up the hill but you know I didn't always work out like that sometimes you'd just hit a hill unexpectedly because I didn't know exactly what the terrain was going to be like yeah um Okay, a few many questions of this. Uh, you okay? You mentioned the, the the person following you. What was what was the logistic then? Um, uh, did you have like I've seen a photo of a van on Instagram that, that yeah have some supply in it. Uh, was he following you at all time or just meeting you at some key points or? Yeah, he, uh, we varied it up a bit. You know, the first day I think we uh, it would be. 10 to 20 kilometers normally he would go up the road and then uh, I would just meet him then every 10, 20 kilometers or so. And then uh, after the first day, it was normally more like five or 10 kilometers. And sometimes first thing in the morning when you're really struggling and you're walking more than you're running, it might be only every like three kilometers or something like that. So yeah, basically you would judge it. We had a, we had a, a list of like, towns and villages and targets where the next stop would be and then there were but there were times we wouldn't really stick to that necessarily we would just make it five kilometers and say i would just go yeah just go five kilometers up the road i'll meet you there or may i feel a bit better you can maybe go 10 kilometers ahead okay. and that would depend well not just on how your legs are feeling but how hungry or thirsty you are as well if you're starting to get a bit dehydrated it would be you would have to just go there five kilometers up the road because I might need a bit more water sooner. So for your friend too, it was it was a full time job for 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 six days. Pretty much, yes. Uh, I was aiming to start as close to four a.m. as possible. I think the alarm was normally getting set for quarter to four. I never really, other than the first day, I don't think I did actually ever start bang on four. It was normally quarter past to half past four. Uh, so yeah, he would be getting up the same time just before four o'clock and he'd be finishing at the same time. It was generally between 11 and midnight that we finished, apart from the last night in Inverness, which was uh, three o'clock in the morning. So yeah, yeah, he was pretty tired at the end of it as well and had to catch up in a lot of sleep. So <laughs> we were both getting through copious amounts of caffeine, put it that way. Yeah. Where, where were you sitting? Uh... Those days. In the van, yep. So uh, that was something that we probably could have planned a bit better. Originally, I was thinking of taking an air mattress in the van, 
but then we decided it might take up too much room, so we just got, well, a, a mini air mattress thing, but it wasn't really good enough for me. Just had a sleeping mat, a uh, kind of a big yoga mat. But yeah, it wasn't comfortable enough and it kind of made it more difficult to sleep. So should have gone with a proper mattress, probably just yeah, thrown it in the back of the van would have enabled us to get a better sleep. And uh, there was one night, I mean, because on, on the night of the fourth night, I only got about 20 minutes sleep and that like badly affected me the next day. It was by far, day five was by far the shortest uh, mileage that I managed to cover. And I just felt tired all day and I was having to take a cat nap at the side of the road. And I think we stopped for an hour and a half in Thurso when I got in the van and tried to sleep. But I still couldn't sleep in the van. So I was just lying there for an hour and a half, my eyes closed, getting a bit of a rest. But in the end, I, I, I lost a lot of time, didn't cover any distance during that time. And I still didn't get any sleep. So it was uh, that day went pretty badly. So that night I had the idea, which I wish I'd have had sooner, of uh, let's try and make sure we stop next to a grassy area so that I can just uh, sleep outside and I'll just throw the air mattress in the grass outside the van so the weather was okay. And yeah, I got a bit of a better sleep that night. So I wish I'd have tried that sooner, just sleeping outside rather than in the van. It would have been a bit better, although, well, certain areas where we stopped, the midges would have been pretty bad, so it might not have been possible ever. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it was a bit more comfortable in the grass than in the van. So that that was the one, probably the biggest mistake of the run was uh, not putting enough uh, effort into organising their uh, comfortable sleeping quarters. Yeah, logistic could be, I mean, it's a, it's a six day, it's a week, it's a week event. Uh, logistic could, yeah. be, could be really complicated. Obviously, if you get, you know, if you get like a, like there was some some tour, uh, there's there's a YouTuber that I follow also, um, Elia, Elia, Elia Good, yeah. who just ran across America, but he had like, you know, like a bus uh, following mm -hmm. him, and, you know, a lot of support. I think that that would make a big difference on the recovery if you can put, you know, go into a very nice mattress for four hours. That's that's a big yeah. difference, I guess. Uh, but yes, living in the grass is probably probably a very good way. And you, you were never stopping during the day for like short 20, 30 minute nap at some point it was purely between midnight and four i tried but i'm not very good at cat napping during the day uh, the first day uh, we stopped for about 20 minutes because i didn't get any sleep uh, the night before we started okay so that was another mistake i thought hey uh, well we just spend the last night in the van before we started at inverness castle at 4 a.m but uh, well, it was a mixture of the van not being very comfortable, but also probably the adrenaline. If I'd have stayed yeah. at my friend's place, I might not have got any sleep even in bed because we didn't even feel tired. I think we were both wide awake all night, just lying down in the van, thinking we're not even close to getting sleep. We're considering starting an hour earlier at 3 a.m. I think at one point, I think, well, will we just go. We're wide awake and ready. So. Yeah, maybe. I, I decided I didn't want to stay at my friend's place. I thought if we're starting early in the morning, we're never going to get out that early if we're in bed. It, it always takes a lot longer to get out of a comfortable bed than it does a uh, sleeping bag and a the, the mat on the floor. But it uh, might have been better to have had one last sleep in bed that night, but might not have slept anyway. So that I caught up with us. Uh, like the next afternoon, I started to feel pretty tired it was like when I started running at 4am I was still like wide awake so it was like I didn't really feel any negative effects of not sleeping at all I was uh, probably the adrenaline but still felt great for the first few hours and then it was probably about four in the afternoon I think I started feeling really sleepy and the sleep deprivation was getting to me so that was the first time I tried to take a nap I think it was about 20 to 30 minutes in the back of the van but I think I only got about two or three minutes sleep. So I felt a bit more refreshed after it because, yeah, it's better than nothing. Just lying down with your eyes closed, you are getting a bit of rest. But it wasn't as good as it could have been if it was proper sleep. And I think I did nod off very briefly, but only for like two or three minutes, very light sleep. So, yeah, the cat naps weren't a great success. There was a couple of other times where I just slept on the verge at the side of the road. So again, yeah, that was maybe better than going into the van there. 
it was like on day four, I think it was, I just started getting really sleepy and uh, walking up the hill. I think my brother was with me that time. He came out at the weekend uh, to help pace me. That was a bit of a help. And then he just suggested to me, he was like, he saw that I was new falling asleep whilst I was walking up the hill. She's like, do you want to just take 10 minutes on the verge at the side of the road? So I said, yeah. So I just keeled over on the side of the road, tried to get 10 minutes. And I think I maybe slept for four or five minutes. It did help a bit. But it was like all these motorbikes woke me up twice. They went past once and like woke me up and then I fell asleep again. And then they came back because they saw me like my high vis top, just like fast asleep at the side of the road. And so they thought I might have had an accident. So they drove past again just to check I was okay and then woke me up again. And then I was like, right, okay, well, that's 10 minutes. I've been woken up twice with these motorbikes. So time to get going again. And I think on day five, which was my difficult day after no sleep, uh, I did, I had a bit of an effort to sleep at the side of the road again, just just outside Wick. And again, I think I stopped about 15 minutes. I maybe slept for three or four of those minutes, uh, which is better than nothing. And yeah, but it didn't refresh me for a bit. But it uh, wasn't, wasn't great still. But yeah, there were times where I had to try and get a nap, but... I think in general, I've been aware for a while, if I'm wanting to do multi-day running, I need to try and practice getting better at cart naps and being able to like fall asleep instantly during the day, because that can like really help if you can fall asleep quickly. Hopefully I can tie in meditation with practicing to maybe get some proper sleep as well and being able to rest better. So it's something that I need to work on future multi-day fastest known time attempts. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Yeah, training to our training for yeah being it, like the ability to fall asleep quick, as you said, that would be. I, I, honestly, I never tried obviously events like this, but uh, it's, mm-hmm. I also I'm also struggling sometimes to get asleep, but just like normal, you know, get asleep at, <laughs> at home. Uh, but I can imagine like if you are able to just like flip a switch and just take 20 yeah. minutes and then wake up and keep on running, that must be a pretty nice uh, superpower um, uh, for for yeah, those events. Yeah. Like, uh, that would definitely help make me a better runner, I think, if I could learn how to do that. Yeah. <laughs> did you did you have any like very, very uh like frightening or bad symptoms of sleep deprivation? Did you did you hallucinate or did you you know make Not like, really, no. Uh yeah, a lot of Altamarathon runners reckon they uh they get to the hallucination stage. I didn't uh it's something I think I need to improve on being able to battle through the sleep deprivation because I think uh yeah, I just I just felt very sleepy and it was just yeah, I found it difficult to run and maybe if I'd have just tried harder to get running that I might have been able to fight it off better than if I was walking because I think it seemed to get worse when I was walking and already tired. So that was maybe like the one thing that caused my uh yeah, my psychological state to maybe get a bit weaker was when I was suffering from uh, sleep deprivation because I was able to battle through the fatigue and the muscle tiredness fairly well. I'm quite good at that. But when I was just yeah, so short of sleep, it kind of drains you psychologically and yeah, kind of like just found it really hard to keep running at those stages. So I was just slowing down and walking more and then just getting sleepier and sleepier. So that's, that was like okay. the most difficult challenges that I think I faced in the run. That's interesting. So that that was it was harder on you. Sleep deprivation was harder than muscle soreness and being yeah. I seem to time. yeah. I uh, I definitely it definitely caused me to walk more than uh, the general fatigue that I was able to run through the fatigue more than the the sleep deprivation. I think that was what really okay. caused me to slow down on day five. So yeah, that that's that's. Uh, probably the weak area that I need to work on more. Yeah. Was there was there any time where you actually, because of the deprivation, you consider just stopping and say, okay, let's, I'll try next time, or you, you never reached no, that point? No, stopping completely. I think uh, when I took that hour and a half break in Thurso, that was something I, I, I thought, well, okay, because I was aiming for 140 kilometer a day average. Mm-hmm. I was hitting, which worked out at six days, basically try and beat six days. And I set that target because that's roughly the same uh, daily average of the current uh, 
lands into John O'Groat's record is, but that's over like 10 days. That's just under 10 days. It's uh, nine days and 21 hours, I think. So that was my target. I wanted this to be a dress rehearsal for an attempt at the Lands End to John the Goats records. I thought, well, if I can do this for six days, running at 140k a day average, then that sets me up to be able to do it for 10 days, going for the Lands End to John the Goats uh, average uh, record next year. So uh, the sleep deprivation never caused me to want to stop and end, but I did end Thurzo decide that I had to have like a bit of a longer break so I took an hour and a half off and then that meant that I probably wasn't going to make the 140k a day average so and I slowed down in general a lot that day so that was the point where I was thinking well maybe I'll just have to settle for doing it in under seven days instead of under six days but fortunately I managed to make a bit of a comeback and then still finished in under six days in the end but yeah yeah, there's a few moments in day five where I was really thinking that to give up and like my my most ambitious goal and kind of settle for like my my, my secondary goal. That's already that's that's already pretty impressive. Like uh, you you hear a lot about the trail runners uh, who run obviously like shorter distance than yours, but like maybe even like 100k, 100 miles, and they. Quite often, they say that there is always a point in the race where they are thinking, "Okay, next uh, next uh, aid station, I'll just stop. I'll just lay there and just eat and drink mm -hmm. and sleep." Um, so the, to the point where you, the only thing that you you were sort of thinking of getting up was just just okay. I'm not going to be able to finish in six days. Maybe it'll be a bit more. That's uh, that's, that's already a pretty good mm -hmm. achievement. It means that you were near, nowhere near the point of of, of stopping. Yeah. Record. Well, the thing is, I was about two days ahead of the record at that point yeah. because the original record was eight days, 19 hours, and I'd done it in five days, 23 hours. So it was like knowing that you're two days ahead of the record, it would have been pretty humiliating if I just keeled over and like didn't finish. I think by that stage, I worked out that I was only needing to do 60, 70 kilometers a day to break the record. So I, I could have walked the rest of the distance and still oh, broke the record 60, at that stage. Only 60 or 70, so that's, that's yeah. basically nothing, right? <laughs> yeah, well, well, it's walkable in a day. So I, w I was thinking no matter how bad it got, I had to at least keep on walking and I could still just about scrape home with the record. That was, yes, yeah, so breaking that record was like kind of my minimum goal to achieve at the very least but i really wanted six days but seven days would still have been quite good as well that's 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 very incredible um okay so the, the, the cool thing is that um like when you when you started you already had a pretty good idea that you could finish it because you, you said like you were almost always preparing lungs into mm -hmm. because yeah you wanted to have this this pace like you were, i mean you, you you didn't just just beat the record by an hour, like you beat it by, by two days, more two, almost two days. Um, first, how did you find out the, the record? Is there, uh, it's a stupid question, but is there like a registry of, of FKT somewhere? Or like how do you Yes, there's a fastest known time website. I think okay. it's uh, based in the USA, but it uh, uh, covers the, the whole globe. So it's got okay. fastest known time. Uh, records from like all, all around the world so okay it's kind of really mushroomed in popularity over the last couple of years it, it, it was growing exponentially every year as it was but then when the pandemic hit and lockdown started uh, last summer everyone went a bit crazy with their own like fastest in time record attempts because there was no races on so everyone was like okay then yeah. we'll just have to go out and do our own runs and our our own courses, try and break some records and long distance courses. So, yeah, really, uh, its popularity has grown quite a bit. So, that reminds me, I still actually need to get in touch with them. They did give me a bit of coverage during my run, but I need to send off the official documentation now to get it uploaded on the website. So, that's okay. So, there is a process like official. you yes, submit yeah. your GPS files, or how do they verify this? Or Yes, it is the GPS files, yep. Yeah. So uh, I recorded it in Strava and Sunto. Uh, fortunately, I had two uh, sources because my Strava went a bit mad. It had a bad day in day five, the same time I was having a bad day and it had some inaccurate readings. Uh, I think it was because it's connected to the GPS in my phone and that stopped working for a while. So I had to restart my phone and then 
it started working again fine after that but there was a few uh, dodgy uh, yeah kilometers and that so that's an imperfect record in day five my Strava but the fortunately the Sunto was completely accurate so yeah I'll get all that sent away to them. I mean you can still you can still record with Sunto and just upload the Strava from from Sunto. Yeah. Sure. yeah that's true but, yeah that's what i was doing yeah okay that's what you, okay 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 that, that's right how did you handle the the battery of the suntor can can the, the watch handle one full day or yes uh the watch i think it's about 30 hours so it can almost okay. do two days there is actually a life extension on it so you can put it down to like a less accurate setting and it can even last up to like 90 hours i think they claim okay. but when when i've tried to change it to that setting it, it was just completely inaccurate it didn't work so i'm not convinced that but i think my brother had the same watch i think he's used it and he thought it was all right but i found that the the yeah, the longer time frame settings aren't particularly accurate, but 30 hours is still pretty good. So I was able to, that it would last the day. And then, uh, so I took a battery pack. I got a battery pack before the run so that I could like charge it up overnight and my phone as well. Cause I think my, my phone was lasting about 16 hours, so it wouldn't quite last the whole day so if i stopped for a meal break i would just stick it on charge for 20 minutes and then that would just give it enough to to last the whole day but yeah i was always a bit like paranoid about the technology parking in because it would have been really frustrating to have had a good run and then something go wrong with the technology and it's all gone to pot okay no but, well, but honestly the, the choice you've made is it's pretty cool like it's 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 getting pretty famous at least i mean i i've known only since i've moved to the uk about this uh, uh north coast 500 but it seems to be pretty pretty famous and, and obviously people usually yeah. just drive it uh, don't, don't run it it's but, a very uh, famous tourist route now so it's yeah. like it goes around some of the most remote parts of scotland so the areas on the route used to be very quiet and no one used to go there a lot with single track roads. There are some complaints from people that live there now that's got too busy because there just isn't the infrastructure to deal with all the tourists that go there. But I didn't think it was too busy when I saw it there, but it can get a bit busy in some quiet places with single track roads. But yeah, it's become quite an iconic route. So everyone's heard of the North Coast 500 now. There's not been that many people run it yet. Uh, I think there's been more cyclists do it. There's been more fastest known time attempts on bikes than people running it. But there's someone else going out to run it uh, starting on August the 13th. So okay. they're making an FKT attempt. I'm not sure if they're still going for the record because they would have been aiming for the old record of oh, eight okay. days, 19 hours. <laughs> and now there's like an extra marathon day on top of that. So we'll, we'll see if they reassess their targets. But the person there... <laughs> Message me on Instagram to say hi and let me know that he was also going out to do it in August. So, best of luck to him. Before we move to this uh, this topic, because I really want to talk about Lance and the channel group, uh, the numbers of your North Coast 500. So, 516 miles, isn't it? I think that's. The... Yes, I think so, though. I think I've also read 518 miles somewhere. Not oh. 100%. So, I think it's 516. Ah. When you've done the 516, you can do two more rides. <laughs> I, I really wish it was only 500, though around 500, because on my final day, it was around that mark that I started to struggle. I was I was doing really well between Helmsdale and about Dingwall. And then, uh, yeah, I was flying flying through it for about 80 kilometers. And then just the last 30 kilometers, I started to struggle and the wheels fell off the wagon a bit. So yeah, yeah, cause it was like 153 kilometers my last day and for about 120 kilometers, I was doing really well and I felt quite strong. And then, yeah, it was just a, a long slog for the last few hours. Ah, oh, that's it, 153K, wow. So mm -hmm. in, the, in the end, what is the official time? So it's five days. How many hours? Five days, 23 hours, four minutes, and I think 17 seconds. Okay. Okay, so under six no, days. Not exactly sure in the seconds, but it was uh, five days, 23 hours, and four minutes anyway. And I think it's okay. Seconds. I think we can, uh, it's, uh, yeah. I think it's, it's fair. Uh, so, yeah, you, yeah, so you started at 4 a.m. on one day, and you basically finished. Yeah. Almost six days later, but not a four, three something. Yeah, three or four, yeah. 
therefore that's that's incredible so in those six days how was what's the average kilometer per day then it worked out in the end i worked out at 139 kilometers a day so i was okay. uh, just short of the 140 target but okay. not not too fast about that that was just around figure uh yeah it was just under six days so yeah the land's end to john o'groats record works at an average of 142 kilometers a day so that's just three kilometers more but also the land's end to john o'groats route is actually a lot flatter so yeah i was going to say elevation uh, not not as difficult elevation games a lot more for this but then the land's end to john o'groats route is four days more so it's uh yeah more days but flatter days so I think uh, my NC500 FKT does compare relatively equally to the Lands End to John O'Groats FKT now, so it's something that's within my capabilities. So uh, Thank you very much. Uh, again, you were the first guest on this channel. Um, hopefully the video gets a lot of views um, and, uh, and, and it's going to push you more uh, to, to sponsorship and, 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 you, and, you, and more uh, uh yeah helping your future uh future challenges uh, thank you very much for 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 coming on the channel i hope it was uh something that uh interested a lot of people and educates a lot of people about what is it to to run 500 miles uh in in six days uh i le definitely learned a lot that was, that was really really nice to 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 have you here i hope you come next time with a new fkt about uh about uh Lansen to john O'Groat. Yeah, okay, thanks very much, Jeremy. It was a pleasure to be interviewed by you. Yeah, and uh, keep in touch. I'll be more than happy to speak to you again. Definitely, definitely. Let's do that. <laughs> Cheers. Yeah. Okay, thanks a lot. Bye. That's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I cannot leave you before giving you an audiobook recommendation. You know, it's a tradition now. And after listening to everything Luke said, the first book that jumped to my mind is Born to Run from Christopher McDougall, which narrates Christopher McDougall's story through the Copper Canyons to meet with the Tarahumaras, who are extraordinary runners running insanely long distances on a daily basis. Kind of what Luke did. It's a great book to read, but it's even better to listen to while running. So, so here we are. This is my recommendation for your next run. There will be a link in the description if you want to give it a try. Now, all the usual, like, subscribe, notification bell. Make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss the full interview release next Wednesday. And as always, thank you very much for watching and until next time.